The National Bureau of Statistics recently published its premium motor spirit price watch for September this year. According to the report, the average retail price paid by consumers for PMS in September this year was 1,013 naira 46 kobo, a 64.55% increase compared to September of last year, which was 626 naira 21 kobo. Very alarming, right? Furthermore, the average retail price increased by 24.08% from 830.46 in August 2024. International finance and economic analyst Mokhtar Mohammed joins me now for more on this conversation. Good morning to you, Mokhtar. Uh, thank you, Justin. My uh, pleasure to be on your program today. All right. Where do we even start from? There's a whole lot to discuss today. Let's talk about uh, one thing that most Nigerians, uh, you know, talked about all through last week, which was the power ratio. You know, we had uh, power grid collapses uh, like three times. We had it on Monday, on Tuesday, and of course, again, on Saturday. It's becoming very alarming. I saw a report somewhere on, um, on, on, on the, I think on the Punch newspaper, their headline this morning, and uh, it was, Really, uh, okay, let me see if I can remember. I say, grid collapses 105 times in 10 years despite $1.4 billion loans. Reaction, Mokhtar. And sometimes when you see all these things, you tend to think um, it's, it's, that, um, it's that direct the way they will, they will put it up to you. Hmm. But I, I will have to tell you that um, it's not really. Um, um, that all the investment that we saw there actually went for that um, issues of uh, just the generation alone. We should also know that this is most most of them went for generation and transmission and transmission. Yeah. This very issue, I think, is mostly uh, has to do with gener gen um, transmission, which has been a challenge. And like the minister said, uh, most of this is due to lack of investment in that space. Uh, there have been no investment in that space for a very long time. And this is largely due to it's, it still remains a government owned um, 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 own, oh, is that one area that government is still uh, holding on to that not been given to the private sector that is a, in the area of of, um, of gener generation what we have is just transmission so I think um, uh, it's it's just about um, in, um, investing the right money there and also looking at what are we really investing the challenge is that we have very oscillate equipment because sometimes this grid collapse because sometimes because once once it passed above five thousand megawatt you get up to six thousand you see the grid will collapse because it does not have the capacity to mm -hmm. to to retain that high uh, numbers of voltage mm -hmm. i think so what i think what we, we should be thinking is how government can get their hand off that sector and give it to the private sector that have the financial capability that's another thing because uh, again if you look at the discos you realize that a lot of them also are struggling financially They've not been able to invest in that um, uh, 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 business like everybody thought they should. So one is good to give it to the private sector, but secondly, we must give it to the real private sector, not giving it to politicians to front and then bring in people that are not able to do the do, do carry out the work and we'll be back to where we are. I think uh, we should be ready to give it to the private sector and see how that plans out. Okay, but why are we not doing that, Mokhtar? Because uh, if I do a bit of maths, going by the uh, the statistics that um, the Punch reported, 105 times in 10 years, that's an average of about 10.5 um, um, uh, times. That's about, let's say, 10, 10 times uh, every year in the past um, 10 years. And uh, we know that we don't have enough capacity. Uh, we've done a whole lot in the power, power sector. We've done a whole lot of unbundling, a lot of privatization. Oh, so to speak, and yet we are not getting it right. Is it that we know what the issues are, we're not doing that, or we're not doing it the right way? Because just the other day, uh, David O's uh, father was in the news and talked about uh, you know, all of the bureaucracy that he had to go to just to, you know, you know, to get um, some improvement in the nation's power sector. What is the problem with our power sector and specifically the investments therein? Um, Justin, there's a saying, they say, when the foundation is faulty, what can the righteous do? Mm. I think the foundation of the privatization of the fire sector is very faulty. Uh, we, we didn't get it from the start. And again, we have to start all over again. Uh, it doesn't mean that starting all over again means um, um, taking the, I mean, telling the discourse that they are no more capable. Then you think of uh, giving them an um, 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 objective or meeting. They have to meet some pressing parameters to continue to be in business. 
that will force them to get more investors and then they will begin to to, to invest in that because i think since the the the, the, the privatization or the buying the unbundling of uh, nepa most of these uh, new companies have not really invested so much especially in the area of distribution whether you're talking about the KJ electricity yeah. whether you're talking about the equi electricity whether you're talking about bini electricity whether you're talking about uh, um, Potak, uh, or you're talking about Potaco electricity or you've been talking about abuja electricity and you mustn't forget that the ibadan electricity and um, i think ibadan had their own challenge they were taken over by a new management team, the same thing with Kaduna. So that tells you that a lot of things have gone really, really wrong. Because what it means is that there's been a lot, there's been, oh, you could say there's been a lot of investment in the area of um, generation, but there's not been a lot of investment in the area of trans, uh, transmission. Oh. So what you see that you have so much high voltage, but the transmitting company are even refusing to collect, to, to, to take it oh. from the distributing company, uh, from uh, the, the distribution company are refusing to, to take it from the transmission company. So that shows that there's a lot of capital needed to boost that sector. And you won't say the government have not tried them. The World Bank also is aiding a lot of uh, this. But I think, again, brokerage is one challenge. Um, FX is another challenge. You mustn't forget that it's still there. Then again, right pricing. Until recently, uh, oh. they, they've been complaining about pricing, that they don't think they are having the right pricing in terms of uh, how much they are to, 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 to uh, charge consumers. Not to this moment, I think government is still playing paying subsidy for some band of Nigerians, and then some bands are also not. Some bands are paying very, very high. So it's 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 a lot of factors that are really affecting it. For these factors to be addressed, a lot of synergy have to happen. A lot of sincerity has to come to play, and a lot of government policy to encourage investment in that sector needs to come online rather than just coming up with policies trying to see how you can use some of these policies to drive big time players into the nigerian power sector because nigerian power sector mm. is one of those gold mine in terms of investment and when you have the right policy there's nothing that stops you from attracting most of the best of the best power power, power uh, players in the world mm. not coming to nigeria if you have the right policy because definitely is this huge potential in the, in the power sector in Nigeria? Is it in distribution? Is it in transmission? Oh. It just even even in generation, even in, even even sometimes even uh, in building up of new uh, yeah. um, 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 generation um, um, term, um, term and others. So yeah. even there's a lot so much to 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 get in the power sector. We just yeah. need to come with the right policy, and we are trying to right investors. Oh. I think will be will be smiling. I hope we get the right investors because Nigerians really need to smile because uh, the recent report by the World Bank is really nothing to be happy about. In as much as uh, they are saying that uh, Nigerians paid about 24% uh, more for a litre of premium motor spirit in September. You know, there also the latest report by the World Bank is indicating that about um, 129 million Nigerians currently live below the poverty uh, line. That's uh, it has increased from 40% in 2018 to about more than half that's 56 percent you know this year what are your thoughts um Mukhtar, really well i'm not surprised um, i keep saying that our economy is a petrol economy <laughs> so we have a petrol economy once there's a hike in that state then it tends to affect every life every aspect of our life food mm -hmm. transportation housing mm -hmm. um, education Mm -hmm. Everything are affected when you have uh, um, that increase, and so that's why you are seeing that huge twenty-four percent. So I'm not surprised that it's driving a lot of Nigerians into the poverty level because, again, mm -hmm. you are seeing those increments, but you are not seeing commensurate increments in terms of earnings or wages of of some Nigerians. So that for me also is is the biggest challenge. You are having this increment, but wages also are not mm -hmm. uh, um, going up. So that is why you're getting a lot of Nigeria and uh, into those uh, poverty level. And again, a lot of Nigerians also are getting out of job because most of the multinationals are leaving the countries. Um, the smaller companies that are trying to take up those space, they are struggling with finances. And so they are struggling with a lot of infrastructural decay and also they are struggling also with petronage because, like I said, the any ability of Nigeria. So they are, they are doing what we call right sizing, sending more Nigerians into the labor market. And once you send them into the labor market, then you are sending them into the poverty level again. So those are, um, those critical challenges that we are facing. Uh, like I said, uh, 
The policy seems okay, but again, there must be a human angle to most of this policy okay. in terms of the removal of subsidy, in terms of electricity tariff, in terms of exchange rate. We have not seen those uh, palliative, which will come in as cushioning the effect. Um, you look at the United Kingdom, uh, we started this journey of bringing down inflation together. And today, the inflation has gone below expectation about one point something percent in terms of the inflation. And what has happened is that the government look at what are the key drivers of inflation at just by the high cost. They look at electricity, they look at transportation, and then they, they, they make sure that every household enjoy a relatively subsidy in terms of electricity. And then also they make sure that they, they improve the earning ability oh. of every uh, of everybody in the UK wherever you are working, and that also boosts the consumer space, and then in turn again, reduce household expenses because power was brought down for a set, I think for about two years, the government was supplementing or paying subsidy for. So those are ways whereby the physical side comes up with policy to make sure that what the monetary side is right. doing are not having so much negative impact. But in Nigeria, it seems to be um, the government wait for the monetary side to go, to, to come up with policy and then mm. they just sit down and see how this policy suffocates Nigerians. Okay. Before we uh, leave uh, this issue of cost of living to taxation, I just want to get um, your opinion on something because I was speaking with someone about the issue of um, the price of petrol and um, the situation in the country generally uh, that's uh, you know the the inflation and um, how Nigerians have been, you know, finding it um, hard to eke a livelihood. Uh, someone once said that the issue that we have right now was not exactly as a result of um, the removal of subsidy of fuel, uh, but he actually blamed it on uh, the floating of the Nile. But in my head, I feel both of them go back to back. What are your thoughts very quickly? No, they don't go back to back. I totally agree with him. I think we okay. did two critical policy at the same time. Um, okay. Yes, uh, floating of the Naira was something that should be done for market forces, but again, before you float your Naira, what is the true value of your Naira? That's one thing we did not establish before we floated the Naira. And secondly, we did not get that liquidity to make sure that that true value is not eroded. And because when you leave your mark, your, your currency for market forces, market forces are capitalists, they will take advantage of it. So I think that for me is, is I can't but agree with him yeah. because again, with the removal of subsidy yeah. and um, exchange rate floating, doing that Nigerian depend on that for 70 to 80 percent of what they consume that you saw those hyperinflation that we are suffering from now so I okay. totally agree with him they were good policy but mm. they came in at the same time without right. um, addressing some of the key drivers that will cost it to uh, to have negative impact on Nigeria. Okay, very quickly, as we wrap up, um, the issue of um, tax reforms um, you know, has been in the news for over time with the federal government talking about consolidating um, all of our taxes and everything. But then the recent reports that we uh, hear right now is that the federal government is actually mulling over a 5% tax on telecoms services, including uh, betting, gambling. I know the federal government uh, needs to all the revenues um, that it can get. So what are your thoughts concerning this uh, new development as we round off? The other thing I can I have said is I think the tax reform policy I mean committee set up by the federal government one of the best policies a committee that is working now that you could see that they are looking at businesses they are looking at how to use tax to to grow businesses they are also looking at how to use tax to get revenue for government they are also looking at how to use tax to get more Nigerians coming to the tax bracket so I think uh, they've done well uh, for this policy especially the telecom policy if you remember that this policy was on ground before yes, now yes. during the buhari administration yeah. and the then minister actually went to get a presidential order to suspend that because of what the effect the effect it will have in businesses the effect that it will have in the telecom sector especially in terms of price movement so if you are coming in with this five percent increments on that then you will also be looking at uh, the cost of making telecoms would definitely go up because again the the, the provider will pass these um, um, charges to the to, to the consumer so it, it and again again it could also start full investment in that space if you don't do it and attract more investors into what? that space for gaming and betting i think it's a good thing that that is coming because in developed economy the world 
Um, that side is almost the most highly taxed because mm. again they think that no value was added you just win money so yeah. in some developed countries they take as high as about 40 percent or 30 percent for every uh, 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 winner of any of uh, in terms of betting or, or yeah. gambling so i think that also is All good right. but those that will be affected mostly are are the the low privileged Nigerians that have seen gambling as a means of making livelihood uh -huh. because most of them are looking at it as <laughs> the only means of livelihood these yeah. days. You see again a lot of people as using it as a tool for 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 businesses, smaller okay. people now that you see them by the corner establishing gambi, gambling gambling uh, um, shops all around. I think those will those will be the, the most affected in, in right. the in, in the long run it might bring revenue. We have few gambling companies but in the in in the short term, we we'll see a lot of Nigeria going into that uh, right. job market again because that business will not be profit, uh, profitable again for most Nigerians to begin to participate in gambling. All right, thank you so much, Mukta, for your time. But we have to run. It was indeed a very wonderful um, expose and, of course, um, insights that we had today. Mukta Mohammed, international finance and economic analyst. Many thanks for your time this morning. My pleasure. Thank you for having me. All right, that's the size of the show. That's as much as we have time. We have looked from gambling to gaming to taxation to price of premium motor spirit, of course, to even the you know, power grid collapse that happened um, last week. That's as much as we can take. I'll see you again, same time next time. My name is Justin Akadoni. Bye for now. <laughs>